problem is always that when everybody agrees, something else tends to happen. So, you know, all that negative contrarianism just went away literally overnight. <laughs> so, you know, as soon as the Fed pivoted, it was like, oh, Fed pivot, we're done. Back to buying bonds. I wish they would be more bearish. Uh, that would give us a much better opportunity for bonds to appreciate. But nonetheless, everybody's now moving back to that side of the camp. The Real Investment Show. And welcome back to the show this morning. So as we start thinking about, you know, the rest of this year, one of the current conundrums is where to allocate capital. <laughs> you know, last year, you know, we, we were talking repeatedly about, you know, buying bonds. Bonds had, you know, very negative return, et cetera, and that, you know, nobody wanted to own bonds. And, you know, that was kind of the situation then. It was a very contrarian trade at that point. Now, unfortunately, everybody wants to buy bonds. Uh, headline in the Wall Street Journal this morning, Wall Street doubles down on bonds. The consensus is that interest rates have peaked for the economic cycle, for making further investments in treasuries and highly rated corporate bonds a good bet. Problem is always that when everybody agrees, something else tends to happen. So, you know, all that negative contrarianism just went away literally overnight. <laughs> so, you know, as soon as the Fed pivoted, it was like, oh, Fed pivot, we're done. Back to buying bonds. Um, I wish they would be more bearish. Uh, that would give us a much better opportunity for bonds to appreciate. But nonetheless, um, you know, everybody's now moving back to that side of the camp. So if you haven't thought about buying bonds yet, it's not too late. Um, we talked about how interest rates had gotten very overbought and that those needed to correct. We've actually been having a little decent correction going on in rates here. Uh, rates peaked up uh, a little bit above 4% on Friday. Could go a little bit higher here. We're not oversold yet on, on rates. But again, that's an a inverse correlation between rates and, and bonds. So right, we need interest rates to get oversold and uh, sorry, get overbought. Let me back that up. When rates get oversold, bond prices will have declined because of the inverse relationship, and that'll put you in a good position to buy bonds. So we're not there just yet, but it's working on it. But, you know, again, it's just now everybody's moved back into that camp. Not surprisingly, it was a pretty obvious trade, but, you know, here we are. The other question, though, is, 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 is it going to be the Magnificent Seven this year again? leading the way, or is it going to be some other group of despondent assets that we've seen previously? And this has really kind of been the case since 2021. Um, you know, in 2021, nobody wanted to own petroleum stocks because of, you know, climate change and ESG and all this, and those were the best performers in 2022. 2022, nobody wanted to own Fane stocks because they were too overvalued and revenue growth was declining, and last year they couldn't get enough of them. So, as we move into 2024, in 2023, it was healthcare, it was financials to a little bit of a degree, um, it was uh, utilities and real estate that underperformed. So are all those going to be the big winners this year? Well, there, there's a case to be made here. If interest rates are going to decline, interest rate sensitive sectors should do better. Um, so utilities and, and uh, real estate should do better if rates continue to decline and particularly if the fed starts cutting rates right that's going to provide more liquidity to those areas and again cap rates go up on real estate etc making those much more attractive um one of the you know but you know in terms of the magnificent seven if inflation continues to fall and you have more disinflation in the economy and or if you have a recession those stocks tend to do better because they actually can generate earnings growth so Again, you know, what's this year going to look like? It's really hard to tell right now. There's certainly a, you can make a case for some certain sectors based on what your expectations are for having a recession or not, or having, you know, declining rates versus stable rates, or declining inflation versus stable inflation. And that's one of the things that we may be dealing with. What if, and again, I don't know the answer to this, but... You know, if interest rates are coming down, stocks are doing well, right? That boosts consumer confidence. So consumers go out and they buy stuff. That stabilizes 
demand in the economy. So let's say inflation doesn't decline, but it doesn't really go up. It just maybe stabilizes around 3% versus the Fed's 2% target. Well, that suggests that the Fed probably, A, won't cut rates. But B, it also means they won't, don't raise them either. They just kind of stay pat. If the economy just kind of muddles along at 2 or 3%, then, again, no real push for the Fed to do anything. They just keep saying, hey, we're monitoring data as it comes in. We know we potentially could hike rates if needed, but right now we don't see any reason to do anything. So maybe one of the outcomes this year is the, is the one that's most unexpected because right now, everybody expects, right, a recovering economy, the Fed cutting rates, and assets prices doing well. That's what everybody expects. That is the global consensus. So what's the non-global consensus? Well, obviously, there's a, a very small camp right now that expects a recession, but you know that's kind of the arguments, right? It's either expansion or recession. But what about the, the in-between? outcome. What if everything just kind of stabilizes where it is? And again, we don't we don't really have anything, you know, any camp out there and there's just a stabilizing scenario. And that's the one thing that is got some possibility to it that again, nobody's really talked about. We haven't really addressed it. We haven't really thought about it in terms of what does this mean for the Fed policy? If things stabilize, maybe that's the environment that keeps the Fed from doing nothing. Maybe they just sit pat for a much longer period than expected. Now, all of a sudden, you've got the issue with everybody that was in the camp of, you know, buying depressed real estate and, and buying, you know, utilities on the expectation of a decline in rates. If rates just stabilize, Maybe that makes those less of a performance group. Then you have to go back and function, you know, start looking at the companies that actually grow earnings in the current environment, right? That's going to bring back to tech. Energy. They're going to continue to grow earnings. Healthcare will grow earnings. So, see, this is the challenge, right? As you look forward, this is the challenge. And again, I, I don't have any of the answers. So don't say, well, Lance, what do you think is going to happen? I can tell you what I think is going to happen, but I don't know, right? It's, it's, it's no different with me guessing than you guessing. And it just depends on who guesses right. That's, that's all we're down to right now is saying, okay, who's got the better guess, <laughs> right? At the, end, at the end of this year, we'll know. If you, if you went long tech and tech wins, hey, you were a genius. We don't know, right? If you go long energy and maybe this year energy wins. Maybe this year is the year that commodities come roaring back, right? That was the expectation last year. Commodities were going to be the big outperformer last year, and they weren't. So maybe this is their year. They have them, right? Uh, commodities go through years where they have absolutely outstanding performances. Maybe this is the year. Don't really have the economic backdrop for it, but may, you never know. So again, it's just this, this is the point that it gets very difficult. And we're kind of in this bit of a limbo stage here in the markets right now. The market's just starting out for the year. Nothing's really kind of working great right now. Um, low volatility stocks are doing better than high volatility stocks because it's a defensive rotation. But what about next week and the week after and next month, right? What's, what are going to be the next steps? And again, this is where it gets challenging. And this is where, but, you know, as investors, we have to start making some bets. And this is why right now we're saying, hey, let's just sit still for the moment and just wait. And let's start seeing what actually starts to bubble to the surface. And we'll kind of know where money's gravitating to in the markets. And we can kind of follow along. Over the next two months, and as we get through the end of the first quarter, we're going to have a couple of things behind us that we'll be able to look at more specifically. One we're going to get fourth quarter earnings here starting next week, right? So starting next week, we're going to start getting a flow of earnings from all these companies. So we're going to get to see just how strong Q4 was in terms of the economy. And we'll have a lot of, uh, a lot of information on consumer spending. We'll have a lot of uh, uh, news information on, you know, retail sales and all these type of things coming in. 
So by the end of the first quarter, we're going to have a lot of data to work on to see, well, this is what the environment is shaping up to economically. But also, by the end of the first quarter, we're going to be able to see some very clear trends for the year as to what's leading and lagging. And so we'll begin to make better estimates. Now, I'm not saying you wait till the end of the first quarter to do anything, but I'm just saying by the end of the first quarter, we'll be able to look at our portfolio and say, this part of our portfolio is doing well. This part isn't doing as well. Let's do some shifts, right? And, and let's rebalance the portfolio. So again, over the course of the next couple of months, we're going to get some better estimations about what's working and what's not. And so again, this is why we keep saying right now, just kind of sit tight, sit tight, don't make any big bets at the moment, you know, based on, you know, what you hear on television or reading the Wall Street Journal about what this year is going to look like because nobody knows. But this is where we often make mistakes. And again, what happens is, as investors, we tend to make these big bets early on in the year. And then when we're wrong, we don't want to admit we're wrong. So we stay wrong too long. Just let's wait and see. Because we'll get a good opportunity to do that. And we'll get an opportunity to rebalance everything. Um, you know, as we talked about, bonds have been under a bit of pressure lately, which is what we thought was going to happen. So just sit tight. We'll have a better opportunity here. To, and I'm getting a lot of emails right now. It's like, now it's time to buy bonds. Just, just wait. We're not, we're not there yet. We're still through that process. Give it some time to work off some of that big run that they had back in November, December. Everything's, you know, everything is, is off sides at the moment. We had a massive amount of buying in November and December, record corporate buybacks by a large margin. We had professional investors just piling into stocks as with reckless abandon. They were just buying everything they could get their hands on. And now they're in the process of unwinding all that, right? They had to get that performance on the books by the end of the year to play catch up to the markets, which they did. And now they're unwinding all that. So that's just going to take a little bit more time to do. And again, that can keep pressure on the markets here for a little bit longer. And if you kind of look at that, right? So if the NASDAQ's flat and the Dow's down 175, see, there's a rotation out of the defensive stocks back into tech, right? So again, all this joggling, you know, here over the last, you know, week is just that process of rebalancing portfolios for the year. So again, don't take any, don't take much out of this stuff, right? This is where it kind of leads you astray. Get daily investment news you can use. Delivered at the speed of the internet at realinvestmentadvice.com.